All right, guys, welcome to the Collaboration Over Competition podcast. This is season one, episode nine, and we have a very, very, very special guest with here today. We have Wichita's mayor, Brandon Whipple. How are you doing today, Brandon? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. No problem. Like I said, I appreciate you taking uh, the time out your busy schedule today to sit with us. So, uh, you know, this is my first time actually sitting down and having a conversation with you. So I just want to get to know you and get a little background. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing and where you're from and what led you all the way to Wichita, Kansas? Yeah, for sure. Uh, first, again, thanks for getting me out of the office. No uh, I'd be buried in emails right now yeah. if, if I didn't get an opportunity to come and uh, really just uh, participate in this podcast. Um, so... What's interesting in my story is, is I'm actually not from Wichita. Yes, sir. And one of the things that I, I, I've learned uh, being a Kansan, if you're not born here, then like you're, you're kind of always seen as a bit of an outcast. But yes. my story uh, really, I, I think, is impactful because I learned Wichita was an incredible city mm -hmm. really because I'm not from here. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I'm from the Northeast. I'm from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I'm about an hour hour and a half uh, north of Boston. Okay. Sometimes that accent comes out, you know, it's, it's, I'm sorry. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the reality is um, I came out here after 9-11. So 9-11 happened, I was my first year of college. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the folks in my generation at that time were thinking about um, giving back to the community, thinking about serving our country. Yep. What can we be doing uh, to play our part? There was a wave of patriotism and, and really and pride. Mm -hmm. And I knew I couldn't go into the military because I actually failed like an asthma test. Okay. Like I was an athlete, I tried to, I, I thought I could go into the military uh, uh, and just like over, overcome you know my, my, my asthma yeah uh and i actually failed a test they, they put like chemicals in my lung and i knew oh, that wow. was yeah it, it was pretty hardcore to be honest mm. um but I, I wanted to still find purpose and a way to serve so what i wound up doing is i applied for americorps uh, that's the, a domestic service okay. organization that um it's national it's it's People will say, well, think of it, of it as like the uh, Peace Corps, but it's only within the, U the U.S. Okay. So I came out here to Wichita, uh, I think I was man, just turned 21, okay. uh, and uh, started my one-year program with AmeriCorps. Mm -hmm. And again, like, I, I fell in love with this place. Like, I thought I hit the lottery. Like, yeah. it was, uh, I learned once I was here, not only are people nicer, like, mm -hmm. people are actually, like, generally interested in nice and building relationships. Yeah. Um, but also... Uh, I, I, I got an in-state tuition at Wichita State. Awesome. I'm a first-generation college student. I'm still paying off my student loans. Hey. And yeah, I gotta tell you, uh, Wichita State University was half the cost of any school in oh, wow. in New England. Wow. Um, and then also I met my wife uh, and uh, you know, it just thought, well, I'll stay here for college and well, then I'll stay here for my graduate degree. And then, you know, Kids I, I, and, right. And yeah. then before you know it, uh, you know, I'm a Wichita. Yeah. Uh, so I, I entered, Public life um, outside of uh, I think the nonprofit world. Uh, Inner public life. Uh, I was first elected. When was that? What? 2012. I was first elected to the Kansas House. Okay. And I served about seven years in the legislature, and it uh, it was baptism by fire. Like there was a yes. lot of ups and downs uh, during that time. We were in a budget crisis. Uh, pretty much the um, the the spreadsheets didn't keep up with, I guess, the ideology, right? Mm -hmm. Like the idea like, oh, it's just, it's gonna work. Yeah. It's all magic. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's like, these are numbers, like it's not working. We yeah. gotta, we, we gotta do something. So anyways, uh, that I think prepared me to be mayor during a time of crisis, uh, mm -hmm. which we, we went through that. I'm sure we'll dive deeper into this. Yes, sir. Uh, so, you know, being mayor, I kind of joke. First, I didn't think I was gonna run for mayor. Um, and then I didn't think, you know, I probably won't win, but mm. we'll we'll talk about the values that are that are um, you know that are important to us. We'll yes. talk about we'll, we'll carry that flag. So even if you don't win, uh, there is a victory in, in steering the conversation towards yes. you know what I consider yes. uh, policies that actually benefit regular folks. Yes. Um, so then we got some momentum, and, and you know it's interesting. It's almost like. Uh, I guess being in a competition, you know, I used to, uh, in my sport, I used to be very competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, when you realize, like, I just don't want to be embarrassed. Like, I'm, yes. I'm in this, I don't want to be embarrassed. But then you realize, like, well, I'm scoring points. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, like, I could win this. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm at this level. Uh, and that, that was the feeling throughout the mayor's race. Get into becoming mayor of Wichita. And, of course, you know, you're smacked with the economic uh, downturn of the max being grounded. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just record. Um, unemployment at, at that point and then you had um, you know COVID obviously yeah. and then uh, this national discussion about uh, social justice reform uh, yes. particularly in the wake uh, of the, the murder of George Floyd yes. so 
Yeah, it was really a it came in at, at a critical time, really. Yeah, uh, and it's it's kind of funny because uh, Avengers Endgame was mm -hmm. big during during that last year, and I remember thinking like, what timeline is this? <laughs> you know, is this the timeline I get to be mayor? Is it, you know, when when everything's going crazy right now? And uh, so I, I leave little nuggets on, on my social media. If you go to my LinkedIn account, which is my most neglected social media, <laughs> it will say Mayor of Wichita is my new job, and then under it for skill set, it'll say crisis management. <laughs> and yeah, I tell you, I've never taken a class on crisis management, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I could teach one. Facts, so. facts. And you know that that kind of leads into uh, my next question. So I. Uh, in doing my research, I watched the interview you did in 2019 while running for mayor, and you spoke about things that you want to see done differently in the city. So one, uh, some things that resonated with me is that uh, you spoke about how Wichita is at a turning point. Uh, you know, uh, our number one, Kansas' number one export isn't wheat, it isn't planes, it's, it's the youth, young people here in Wichita who feels that they can't reach their potential here. The second thing that stuck with me, uh, you spoke about your number one priority being uh, transparency with not only uh, City Hall and the community, you know, making sure everyone feels, you know, value and let their ideas be heard. I want to know uh, from 2019 to 2022, do you feel like you've accomplished those things that you were uh, setting out to be, you know, making Wichita, you know, a better place for the for the youth and overall providing transparency to City Hall and the people uh, of Wichita? Right, there's a few things to unpack with this. Mm -hmm. um, one is if you achieve the goal, you didn't set your goal up high enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I so I, the idea that uh, I, if I was to come in here and tell you like, yeah, we're good now. Yeah. Um, then, frankly, that 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 I think is, is not a winning perspective. Uh, yes. You can always score more points. You yes. can always uh, uh, improve. I think we're on the right path right now, okay. and I'll tell you why. When you dive deeper into that, really, that millennial generation, right? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about folks who uh, 30s and 40s uh, who are ready to lay down roots and to spend the next 20 plus years raising kids and working in a career. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the data showed us uh, that those folks with, with those opportunities were, were leaving Wichita wow. uh, for similar um, similar opportunities in different cities. Mm -hmm. So what can we do? When I got in there, a lot of the discussion was like, well, we need more entertainment. We need more bars. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, like I was in my 20s before, right? Mm -hmm. Like I get it. Yeah. But the reality is, um, you know, we need a city that grows with you yes. as you grow. Like, yes. so when I'm in my 20s, like I'm looking for uh, really fun, safe, bar scene restaurants yeah. go out watch sports um and then like you know my wife and i we're now in a position of life we're looking for nice parks we're looking yes, for yes. uh she's looking for a place where she can jog and, and feel safe yes. i'm looking for a place to take my my, my three boys to, to a splash pad or a splash yes. park where they will be excited mm -hmm. um and, and get tired out and hopefully take a nap yep. uh, and then you know fast forward to my mother-in-law uh she's looking for um for pickleball courts she's looking for uh, uh you know nice parks to walk in she's yep. looking for quality of life features uh on that end yes, so sir. when we think about creating the type of environment that attracts and retains that next generation of talent and by the way any any business you talk to right now uh, and i go and i talk to the big businesses to the small businesses they are concerned about that talent pipeline yes. about folks coming and actually being able to hire folks who, yes. who uh, aren't using this job as a stepping stone, but also, you know, who, who are there who can get the job done. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, to, to do that, we, we got to actually match the values of the next generation. Yes. So a couple things I did. When we dive deeper into those numbers, we know that women and folks who, who are within a, a mi minority group are the top uh, of the statistics of people who left Wichita within that age category to get ta talents and time somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got to ask ourselves, well, why is that? Yeah. And the reality is sitting in a room with uh, uh, folks who might not have the, the same type of experience as uh, women or, or people of color, mm -hmm. uh, and just trying to guess that that didn't help us. That yes, didn't actually yes, work. Yes. Shocker, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, what we did is we created a board on diversity, inclusion, and civil rights. Awesome. Uh, and it starts off, I have very few superpowers as mayor. Um, being mayor is kind of like getting a new smartphone. You start to figure out the features uh, <laughs> and, and what it can do. Uh, yeah. I, I can do a a mayor's uh, advisory committee, and yeah. we did this with diversity, inclusion, civil rights. That actually turned into a standard um, board uh, mm -hmm. that's recognized within our, our city um, our, our, our city ordinances. Okay. Uh, and the goal is to well, how do we create Wichita? Uh, the next Wichita. How do yes. we make Wichita a place where, where folks from diverse backgrounds feel comfortable and yes. confident that they can stay here? Then we, for the first time ever, the city of Wichita actually sponsored um, a pride event. 
and we didn't just sponsor it like we actually pulled it together i got called from uh, a guy who now serves on our park board uh he's the um he's now actually the president of the park board uh because after he pulled off this incredible event in the middle of downtown in nasker park where it was all lgbtq talent nice. uh nice. singing we had enjoy fountain there we had some incredible folks there uh packed out the place on a hot september day i think it was september no maybe it was july i don't know casey it was one of those days right it's a hot day it's a hot day anyways the um uh, he pulled this together in 13 days wow. and he had corporate sponsors uh, that paid for it. We came alongside it and helped as much as we could. And, and that's the type of energy we need. This yes. is a young person under the age of, of 40. Mm -hmm. um, and it brought people together to show that, you know, we, we value everyone here, yes. uh, not just, uh, I guess, folks who fit a certain category. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward, that actually uh, was the, um, the jumping point for us to have a serious discussion about a non-discriminatory ordinance. Yes. So Wichita actually used to be known in the 70s as one of the first cities to have a non-discrimination ordinance that actually protects people uh, who are members of the LGBTQ community. Oh, wow. okay. And it went away in like the darkness of night. Like they, there was no discussion. It was a vote to just eliminate a whole bunch of sections from the or ordinance mm -hmm. that was part of it. Yes. So we want to bring that back uh, to uh, show our values here as a city. Uh, but also to create uh, real pathways for folks who are face discrimination based yes. on their gender, based on their race, based on their religion, uh, based on just who they are, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and we wanted to create a, a um, cheaper alternative legal path pathway uh, to to seek resolution if you are discriminated against. Yes. Instead of going through the state side, where the state side you got to lawyer up, it takes yes. years, it's expensive. Ours is heavily focused on mediation. So like, okay, how do we how do we come to to, to a, a agreement or terms with yes, this. Yes. Uh, so we're able to pass that. Um, moving forward, we also have to be thinking about diversifying our economy. Uh, yes. The next generation, frankly, you, you can't be planning for the next generation's economy with old generation ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Like you gotta actually- I love the way you think. You gotta blend this stuff. So yes. uh, it, it's how do we become innovative? And now that, and I don't know if COVID's behind us or not, like I hesitate, yes. but this year, <laughs> my whole focus, my first two years was keeping grandma alive was mm -hmm. just focused on how do I, uh, uh, how do we get through this crisis pandemic uh, and make sure that we're, we're, we're putting pretty much a shield wall up to protect our, our elderly, mm -hmm. uh, our, our sick, or the people who COVID will really have a larger negative impact than it might on, on you or I. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's about diversifying the economy and actually uh, uh, creating more growth. Uh, so one of the ways you do that is innovation isn't like becoming Austin, Texas or yeah. becoming Des Moines, Iowa. Innovation is actually becoming the next Wichita. Yes. It's building upon oh, what, what you do what, well. Yes. And you know, we think about it, we got, love how you're using iPhones. Uh, I remember hearing a, um, a lecture about uh, innovation and everything that an iPhone does, like the, the early generations of iPhones, was actually the, the stuff that was already being done. You know, yeah. you got a calculator, you got a web, web browser, you have a camera. It just wasn't compact. Yep. Uh, so, you know, innovation was building upon what was the needs and then making making it more compact in mm -hmm. that case. It wasn't coming up with a brand new idea. Yeah. So when we think about the future of Wichita and how to attract and retain up those young folks, you got to have a multi-layered approach. Yes. Uh, so we're not just the air capital of the world. I'm looking to um, bring in uh, all advanced manufacturing. Because yes. if you could build airplanes, um, you could build satellites. Uh, yes. You know, and, and we've been successful with that. We just had a, uh, it's gonna, it's amounting to $40 million of private investment going wow. into our community with an announcement last week, or maybe two weeks ago, of a um, manufacturing of, of high quality snack, snack cakes, snack okay. pies. Uh, that, that are coming down the East Coast, moving to Wichita to help with their distribution. Um, it's going to create 150 new jobs. You asked me about that recently. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a big deal. And it then, is. yeah, so you got that momentum, but then you have the momentum of Bombardier uh, naming Wichita as their um, their headquarters in in um, in North America mm -hmm. uh, or or in the United States. And then you got like Novacos. This was my first economic development deal that I was brought in on was talking to the CEO of Novacos. It's an international internet security firm who has offices in Southern California mm -hmm. and London. Um, and some other places that, that are bigger cities. And now they just moved their, um, their, uh, 
the, the, they just uh, made Wichita their headquarters. Okay. Not just move jobs here and open up a shop. Like we're their headquarters now. Yeah. Uh, and that's because again, people are discovering Wichita and discovering a talent we have here. And I think that when you can diversify the economy, especially into that next generation of uh, you know, we're talking about um, uh, technology, mm -hmm. uh, then you can actually have a better chance of retaining uh, that young talent who might want to work for a place like Nova Coast, uh, yes. but now they don't have to move out to Southern California. They can yes. do it right here. And, and I love that, uh, you know, following you on social media, it seems like you're always doing something uh, like the things that you just spoke and I've seen you doing recently. So it seems like you're always doing something progressively for the city. Uh, and I love that. Man, uh, like I said, this is my first time meeting you, but hearing you speak about the plans and the progress for Wichita, it has me excited. And I feel like the youth of Wichita sh should be excited to have a mayor that is invested in them and, uh, you know, minorities in the city as well. Someone who's, uh, you know, looking to uh, grow diversity, you know, have everyone involved. So, you know, I know I'm not from here. I'm not from Kansas either, but a lot of times I hear uh, everyone wants to leave Wichita. They want to go to Texas. You know, they want to go to the other states. But uh, I, I think it's awesome that we have a mayor who's building a city that, you know, people who grow up here, can, uh, you know, grow up here and do great things. You don't have to go out to the big major cities, you know, to get a good job or, you know, to raise a, your, your family in a good quality city. So I'm very proud and uh, I definitely commend you and wish you the best and and, and continue to do what you do, um, you know, and I, I will kind of lead this into the, my next question. So uh, this is the Collaboration Over Competition podcast. So I wanted to get your, uh, your thoughts on Collaboration Over Competition. So my background is actually in leadership studies, which mm. I swear is an actual thing, right? Like a lot of times I, I think we think about leadership, we think about it as um, being inspired in short term, mm -hmm. um, or we think about it as a process. Uh, really, it's interesting because, you know, as someone with a doctorate in leadership studies, to work in the world of public policy and of um, politics, mm -hmm. Uh, I would say leadership is the art of working with people, yes. while politics is the art of working with people who don't want to work with you. Mm, uh, and and it's so, because you, you, when we talk about collaboration, I think you get this idea that, hey, we should all collaborate, it's, it's good for us. Yes. Uh, well, you know, there's some research, Nash Equilibrium, for example, it's some stuff I had to learn in grad school where, mm -hmm. uh, what's the win, win, win? How do yes. we all win? Uh, how do we kind of stay in our lane but come up alongside each other yes. so that we can, um, in my case, uh, provide better services to the public. So uh, in these scenarios, it's not so much, it's, you know, okay, so you got like the county, like the county government, which I swear is a thing, by the way, like some <laughs> right. folks like, the, well, you're local government, like, right, but the county is also local government, okay. and I'm not the mayor of Cedric County, I'm the mayor of Wichita. Okay, uh, so that. yeah, so I, I usually have, have a little bit of a, a issues where uh, out, people reach out to me, which I'm, I'm happy that folks feel comfortable reaching out, but it'll be about a county issue. Mm. Uh, so county usually has their, their footprint is social services. Uh, okay. They will have calm care, they will have social workers, but they've also had some problems when it comes to filling some of the slots that they have, like trying mm -hmm. to get folks in there and they have to adjust their wages and a bunch of stuff. Yes. So in Wichita, what can we do to try to fill in some gaps here what, so that we all win? Uh, yes. So one of the things we just did with the budget that passed just a couple of weeks ago uh, is we actually uh, put $700,000 towards um, hiring 11 different social workers wow. uh, to integrate into our police force. Uh, awesome. And the goal, frankly, is because our, our police, a lot of times are called out for a, a, a crisis because mm -hmm. you got to call 911 if someone's going through a crisis. Um, but what we're seeing is uh, you can't you can't really police a mental health crisis, right? Yes. Like you should you, we're better off by yes. having a mental health expert yes. on the scene saying, hey, we're going to sit with this person. We're going to make some calls uh, into these different, you know, uh, um, facilities that care for these folks mm -hmm. uh, and, and try to get them the help that they need. And that's a, a better approach. It's better service. Yes. Uh, and it's also uh, better for our partners in the county. Mm -hmm. And then also our partners who work in a nonprofit uh, uh, mental health uh, arena, right? Yes, like sir. other organizations. Uh, so that's how I, I think when it comes to collaboration, you got to figure out where are the gaps and what can we do and how do we do it in a way where people feel good about it, where yes. the county doesn't feel threatened by it? Yes. Uh, you know, like, are you trying to do what we do? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, you know, sometimes I think government gets, it, it, I'm, I'm guessing by mistake, will actually get into a space uh, and put, a, uh, put another business out of business. 
Uh, so our goal isn't to do that. We're, like if there's another organization that's already working, like let's say for job creation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for small business growth and development, um, we're not going to mimic what they're doing. Instead, we rather partner with them, maybe give them yes. some resources, maybe figure out, okay, what, uh, where can uh, we help you when it comes to uh, uh, accelerating uh, the work that you do. Yes. Uh, so that's the the other part of it. It's a balance where like you got to collaborate, you got to fill in the gaps, but also the leadership aspect of it is you got to make people feel like they're part of this team. Part of this team. Yes, and that's one thing we talk about on this podcast. Like uh, when we talk collaboration over competition, everyone just thinks it's goody goody. We get together and we all win, but there's work that comes with it. Uh, so you like you said, leadership, holding people accountable. Uh, you know, learning the strengths and weaknesses of people that you're working with. Uh, you know, you want to make sure everyone is in an environment where they feel comfortable to express their ideas, like you said, transparent, transparency. So uh, I definitely love that answer. Uh, I, my next question is, how can we encourage people in the community to come together to collaborate more? Maybe get out and vote, uh, get out, just make this community a Wichita a better place. How any uh, ideas on how we can encourage people in the community to come together to collaborate more? So really, I think it's about meeting with other people who are inspired to push our community forward. Yes. Um, you get in these spaces where you got someone with a great idea, uh, and if they can kind of match that energy with someone else with a great idea, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, then you get that synergy going. Yes, um, you know, Silicon Valley's been doing this for decades now, where mm -hmm. uh, they're bringing people together who might not be on the same uh, same team, but they're on the same page. Yes. So how do we, uh, in Wichita, create those spaces uh, a lot of times, before there's a crisis, because a lot of times people will reach out to me at a time where it's almost too late, where they need immediate help, yeah. something happened, and at that point, you know... There's only so much you can do. Right, at that point, it's tough to get get actual, real you know, real services to someone. Yep. Um, so the, uh, uh, the the reality is we got to keep these conversations ongoing, yes. uh, create spaces, particularly for folks with, with entrepreneurial minds, with yes. community, uh, uh, community focused, uh, um, callings. Uh, mm -hmm. How do we uh, get folks together so that they can lean on each other and collaborate? Yes. A lot of what my job is isn't so much of creating programs or passing ordinances, or creating policy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, sometimes I call it a network solution, where if you come to me and you have an issue, uh, I have to kind of run it through my own mind and say, or my own check checklist, mm -hmm. and say, okay, is this something that I personally can help as mayor, uh, or is this something that you know, I'm going to get them in touch with with Groover Labs yes. uh, over here, so that they know that Groover Labs is a nonprofit that they can, um, you know, utilize for for workspace. Yes. Uh, so that's the is how do we uh, um, take the needs of the community and uh, help folks uh, get in touch with with you know the the uh, resources yes. that they need so they can be successful. As a community member, I, I will say the resources are out there. So I think it just needs to be. I don't know how it should be done, but I think it just need people just need to be made aware of it. Like this awesome place like Groover Labs, where uh, people, you know, entrepreneurial minds can come here, create, or people, you know, like I said, I've shot every episode of my podcast here at a cheap, affordable price where I got high quality equipment. So it's it's able to help me uh, do great things. So I just wanted to speak like from a community member. Like I'm an entrepreneur in in Wichita, obviously, but. My experience in Wichita being an entrepreneur has been great, even through the pandemic. I know, uh, you know, you guys did a lot with helping making sure businesses had uh, the resources they need, whether it be masks, uh, PPE equipment. Uh, I know I received a couple of grants as well through the COVID stuff. So, I, uh, the resources are out there. You just have to look. I know uh, I recently just signed up Groove Labs to do this thing called Wichita Startup Week. Mm -hmm. So I signed my podcast up to for a 5K pitch competition. So I just got selected as a finalist for that, and that's just something I seen on Instagram and. I'm sure not too many people are aware of. So I think we just need to let people know of the resources that are out here and, uh, you know, we can help people come together to collaborate more. You know, uh, I love that. I feel like we have a mayor who already embodies collaboration over competition, but I think if we just get everybody on the same accord, then we can really push Wichita forward and make it a, a, pro a progressive city for everyone. Like you said, a win, win, win for everyone. And, I, and I'll just touch on something you just said that I think is really important. Um, because it, it's fresh, like I'll, I'll admit I get frustrated, right? Like, we all do. Right, like, you know, like I'm not, I get frustrated, I'm normal. Yeah. Um, sometimes we will put a lot of effort into our program and, uh, or to help out a program, and then we'll even do part of my press conference is promoting this thing, and it's a, and we'll promote it on social media, and then like two weeks later, I get tagged in a post where someone who needs the services that this program would absolutely help them with, mm -hmm. and the reality is like, they didn't see it. They yep. didn't see that we have this going on over yes. here. Um, so, I, and I, I think that really when it comes to the world we're in today, like 
we are the media as well. Yes, like yes. we are not, it's no longer just yes. three news stations. And this is how we are here right now. Right, like yes. we, we have it within our power to actually share stuff yes. to uh, on Instagram, on, on social media, to see something that looks helpful and yes. to retweet it. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you that when it comes to collaboration, uh, particularly as a younger millennial elected official, mm -hmm. um, you know, we do younger millennial elected officials do actually really well in the Twitter space, right? Like yes, that's, yes, like yes. we get that. Mm -hmm. We don't actually retweet each other's stuff very often. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that there's some, some bias almost, this idea that like, if I retweet your stuff yep. and I promote you, yep. um, that somehow you're t that's taken away from me, that this yes. is like a pie and, and I'm getting less now. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, uh, you know, when you think about collaboration over competition, um, you know, we got to be collaborative in, in not just our actions when we come together to meet, but yes. also uh, when we see each other online yes. uh, and, when, and in person. And in person, yes. especially, but also we could be doing the, the community, I think, a better service that also promotes us. Uh, you know, folks who are getting information out there uh, by just sharing that information. Yes. And it's something that uh, I've noticed uh, that, you know, it, it, and I, I think that um, we'd be better off if uh, we collaborate not just in person, but also yes. uh, in getting messages out uh, that are good messages, the messages of services that people actually need. Yes, I, I know one thing we talk about, like being in our generation of social media technology, we all follow each other, you know, we all see each other online, but it'd be nice if we could do that in person too as well, right. follow each other, like each other, you know, uh, speak to each other, acknowledge each other uh, in person, but okay, I like that. Uh, okay, so for my next question, I, he I heard you talk about a lot about how as a mayor, you don't work, you work for the voters, you don't work for big interest groups. Can you kind of give us, uh, you know, explain the roles and the duties of a mayor for people out there who, who may not be aware? Yeah, good good question, because being a mayor in Wichita is actually different than being a mayor in other uh, um, cities. Okay. Uh, so the way, and I'm not going to get too nerdy on this, I'm going to try, <laughs> uh, but local government's different than like a legislative body or than our federal government. Uh, local government, it, it's usually one one group, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so you are with city council. In our former government, the mayor uh, is a city council member, uh, uh -huh. which means I have one vote. I don't have veto power. Um, I can't, I guess, go make something happen by myself. Okay. Um, you need at least four votes, mm -hmm. uh, including the mayor's vote, to, to get something to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that was set up, uh, we're one of the last cities of our size that still has the system. A lot mm -hmm. of other smaller cities do, uh, which means that the city manager is our only employee. Mm -hmm. So I can, if you yell at me because of something, the guy who's painting painting the sidewalk uh, uh, did to you, like I can't do anything, yeah. like, you know, except be comforting. Um, our only employee is the city manager and okay. he uh, is the, manager over all 2,000 plus employees at the city level. Okay. Um, so uh, so we're a little different. I think some folks will, like, like you know, if you're following the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's actually an executive, uh, in an executive position. So he can go and do things using mayor powers uh, without having to go through his, um, his, his body, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the other electeds. Uh, that's something I can't do. Okay. So uh, when it comes to, it, when it comes to, I guess, interacting with, with city government, I think knowing that uh, helps adjust um, expectations. Yes. And because I get some folks who would say, can you go do this? Yes. And and my job is to be real with people. To like, let them know, like, actually I can't and this is why. To mm -hmm. give voters um, enough information so that they understand yes. like what my role is versus another mayor's role. Yes. Uh, and but and when I it comes, answer, right. I, I and think it's important that people know that. We continue. Oh, for sure. No, I just was gonna say the, uh, um, and I don't think I knew that, you know, before mm -hmm. I started running for office. Yeah. Uh, the it's not common, um, but anyways, the uh, um, so as we move forward, I think that uh, if you, and I love politicians who do stupid things. Uh, the um, <laughs> you know, uh, you got these folks who they take polls. They'll actually go spend like ten thousand dollars on a poll, and it's scientific. I know that's the real old school way. No, they, they, like yeah, these are. I mean, they still do this stuff. Like, it, yeah. it, it's cool. I love poll data. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Like, like, like I'm going to, I, I eat, eat up polling. Like, I, I like it. I get it. Mm -hmm. But if you are present and you're showing up to different events and mm -hmm. you're approachable, um, then you are collecting and you're smart enough to actually listen to people mm -hmm. and not just wait for them to stop talking so you can talk. Then you're collecting data at that mm -hmm. moment. That experience is actually collecting data so that you know what does the public want to see yes. uh, from from their local government. And you only get that data by being on the ground and working with people. Right, yes. exactly. And so that's the, 
uh, it kind of fills in what I think some people take the shortcut by paying for yes, a poll does, yes. where well, what do people want? Yes. Well, you know, a lot of times w when you're out talking to folks, uh, they they will, and I love finding problems. Like I know it sounds bad, but I like being out and about because if someone comes to me with a problem, then that's half that I, I I'm halfway to the solution. Yes. Because a lot of times, yes. like it's identifying what is the problem. Yes. And the because uh, you could have someone who has a bad experience, but. We're not quite sure what the problem truly yes. is. We'll like, start thinking on a solution once we identify the problem. Right, exactly. So, and then we can can get into that that you know the, the kind of fun stuff of this yes. is can we actually utilize local government as a way to create positive change? Yes. Uh, so, getting into spaces uh, where folks uh, can, can interact, even if it's negatively, uh, yes. then I, I I think is important. It still freaks me out. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like I get folks who help recognize me, and part of me is like. Kind of like, I'm wearing my glasses, how do you know it's me, you know? Or, um, you know, like, you must be on Twitter or something. Like, uh, but it, the the reality is, like, it's a compliment. Like, I want to I want to be approachable so yes. that people would come talk to me or just say hi, but also to say, hey, this thing's happening over here. Can you get your council member to pay attention to an issue on this street? Yes, sir. Uh, now, for this next uh, couple questions for you guys here, uh, I want to ask, you know, being a public figure, how do you handle criticism? All right, there's a few things, and I'm not perfect at this. I interact more on social media than any elected official I know, and the reason why is, well, a couple things. I can't afford a social media team. Uh, also, um, I, I feel like the feedback I get is more genuine when people know that they are talking to the mayor. Yes, um, So, yeah, it, and that's, and you are. Like, yes. I, I'm just a normal dude, like, like after dinner, responding yeah. to people right like yeah. so the uh and once in a while i get the um this probably really isn't the mayor and and, uh, and i'll tell you i'll like that yeah, happened to me <laughs> right and, and, and you know and i don't mean to be snarky but uh at one point when someone said that i actually did a selfie of me holding like a, a piece of paper like saying like like hi to the person who said that like yeah. this uh, but anyways the uh um so criticism, you got it's how you look at it, and mm -hmm. you know I keep I keep positive people around me. Um, you know my 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 assistant uh, Casey, for example, uh, will actually say people are holding you accountable. That's a mm -hmm. good thing. Yes. They're not being critical. They're showing you what we could be doing better. Yes. So you got to interpret it that way. And then also when you get to like the super negative, crazy stuff, and this is mostly on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, where someone goes on like this like almost intangible rant that has nothing to do with or very little to do with what you actually posted. Straight negative. Right. And, you know, there's the higher level of thinking this because your first initial response is like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to be angry. Yeah. Um, the difference between like managers and leaders is leaders actually take into account mm -hmm. the emotions of the people they interact with. Yes. So did I not, did I tell you this? Did I tell you this in a way in which you didn't feel attacked? Yes. So Emotional usually. Emotional intelligence. Right. Yes. And, and usually when I try to, uh, uh, engage with folks uh, who are just over the top negative there's a few things going on there one if I engage with them directly as mayor sometimes that tones it down sometimes mm -hmm. I realize like oh man the mayor's looking this is just some crazy page I'm posting yeah. on but also you got to keep in mind that the people who and I sincerely believe this the people who are trying to cause pain in others are oh, usually hurt. people who they themselves have a lot of pain yes. that happened to them. Yes. And that's, uh, so you gotta also kind of approach it. So I, I, I'll, I'll do this thing where like, are you okay? Like yes. what you just posted is, is, is above and beyond. Are you okay? Is everything yes. okay? And you, usually, you know, um, because what you just posted is really inappropriate. Yes. And I'd love to dialogue with you, but this isn't a page where we just go on and bully people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you try to open up that dialogue and that I think is uh, is really important, but, but I'll tell you, some of it, some of it, you, you sticks with you, right? Like yes. we're still human, yes. and um, can't erase know. those memories, you know. No, and, and so some of it's like, and the other thing with leadership that's interesting, I guess, in the public policy, is sometimes you got to walk people through the change they actually asked you to make, mm. uh, because you didn't that's you, deep. like, well, you didn't like, and I catch myself in this. Well, I'll do something like, oh, I know so and so needs this done. That group, they really want this done. And I'll go get it done or get what I think it's done. And then mm -hmm. I realized like they weren't following. Like we did it. I didn't, I, I robbed them of the leadership experience mm -hmm. uh, because I just went and got it done without bringing them along mm -hmm. with, with yes. me to get it done. Yes. And therefore they don't see this as achieving what they wanted because they weren't a part of it. Yes. I unintentionally left them out. Yes. Uh, so that's the other thing that you got to do in this. 
it's interesting because there are times where it's like, look, we just like literally did everything you wanted. And then like, why aren't you happy? Like, are you someone who just gets upset all the time? Yeah. Um, but, you know, then I have to reflect back on myself. What I do wrong yes. in reality is like I did it and like we, we took those initial first meetings, took notes. I know what you want. It took me about a month. Got it done. We got money going into it. We're going to fix this. But mm -hmm. like I left you here. I didn't bring you here. Yes. And that I think, uh, you know, leaders are, are supposed to share all the credit when things go well and then yeah. of course take all the blame when things go wrong and if you take these shortcuts if you're not still engaging with folks particularly the folks who, who are the ones who inspired you to make this change mm -hmm. um you run the risk of, of you know they they didn't they they, they felt robbed of, of that experience mm -hmm. uh, so you have to guide folks through the change that they actually want you to make to make sure that they are continuously holding you accountable so that change is actually accepted and they have what we call buy-in. Yes. Uh, so it's a, it's more of an art than a science. And I think that some folks look at this as like a science, like, oh, yes. it's all about data. And like, no, it's really more of an art. It's the art of experience. Yes. Of experience. Yes. And I'm learning that myself. You know, I'm not, I'm not a public figure as yourself, but being a business owner and just being on camera a lot more, I'm learning empathy, emotional intelligence, being more mindful, uh, you know, you can, defend or discern a lot of things with your mental you know if you educate yourself uh and like i said the experiences is what is gonna uh you know make you stronger this is what's gonna make you tougher sharpen your skills to make you more apt to deal with these type of things if you don't have the experience dealing with people and criticism you won't ever get better at it you know you can educate yourself all you want but you have to get the experience uh so i think that that is very important but i will wrap it up there uh once again i, I thank you for taking the time out your busy day to come sit with us i feel like this was a very progressive interview and i'm, I'm sure the community is very excited to hear so once again thank you guys this is season one episode nine with brandon whipple and that's wrap guys it takes a lot everyone thank you so